Welcome to Merge. My name is Pastor John, and we are starting a new series called This Is Our Sex Talk. Whoa. Everybody open up a window and let some of the uncomfortable out of here. I've already had one person say, I don't want to talk about this. Guess what? The good news is this is not the talk. Okay, we're not gonna talk about hardware or any kind of mechanics or anything like that. And if you're afraid this is gonna be weird, uh, I want you to know the approach that we're gonna take to talk about sex in this series is a little different than, than you might think. Because many times when people talk about sex, especially in church, they leave out some of the most important parts. A lot of times when we talk about it, we can focus on the wrong things. So this series is all about asking the question, what if there's more to it than we think? Like what if the stuff that we're hearing in school or from social media or from our friends, what if there's more to it than what you've heard so far? And talking about sex in church can be weird, but the good news is it doesn't have to be. See, I grew up uh, going to church, I grew up in a Christian home, and the conversations I had about sex were very, very limited. Uh, my parents explained to me the, bee, the birds and the bees, the most uncomfortable conversation of my life. Uh, and then after that, it was, don't have sex till you're married. And that was the extent of the conversation. I learned what it was, and I learned not to do it until I was married. And that was it. And the conversations in church, especially as a child or a teenager, were very, very limited for me. I think the closest that I came to uh, learn, learning about it was, don't play with fire or you'll get burned. It was something that I knew existed. It was something that I knew that someday I'd like to do when I'm married. But between the time I learned about it and when I was married, there was a big, big gap I didn't learn about it from someone, uh, I didn't have anybody that I could talk to, or at least I didn't think I had anybody that I could talk to, who I admired and respected their walk with Jesus Christ. So I learned a lot about sex from my friends, who didn't know anything, I've come to learn. Uh, I learned a lot about it from movies. And nowadays, it's even harder for you guys, because you've got more voices in your lives, you've got social media, and there's all kinds of different things going on around there. And regardless of what your experience has been, regardless of whether or not you've had the talk or how that went, there is one thing that we can agree on. Because when it comes to sex, everyone has an opinion. You all have an opinion right now. Your friends have an opinion. Your parents have an opinion. Kids in your school have an opinion. Social media, the society, everybody has an opinion. It's not that no one's talking about it. Everybody's talking about it, but everybody thinks that they're right. And that leads us to a question that we need to ask. What should we believe? Like if everybody has an opinion, and many times there's some overlap, but a lot of people will disagree on what's right versus what's wrong, What's okay versus what's not okay. So what is it that we, if we are Christians, if we are followers of Jesus Christ, if we have asked Jesus into our heart to be our Savior, and we want to follow him as Lord of our lives, what should we believe when it comes to sex? Because for me it was, don't do it till you're married. And that was drilled into my brain. But that was it, and I didn't know anything else. And so I grew up thinking that having sex was this line, and I shouldn't go over the line, but I thought that everything else was okay. And I thought God was like, hey, John, listen, I have a plan for sex, and you shouldn't do it till you're married, but you can figure the rest out on your own, right? But the fact is God loves us so much that there is a plan, that he wants us to understand what sex is and what it isn't. And so throughout this series, I kind of want to take some of the awkward out of it, as much as possible, and I want to talk about this from the perspective of following Jesus. So with as many questions, with as many messages as you've heard about sex from movies or social media or your friends or your parents, I want, to, I want you to ask yourself something. What if there's more to it than what you think, or what if there's more to it than you've heard of so far? 
Because if you're going to get the most out of this series, I'm going to ask you all, and this isn't something we're going to do or raise our hand, but I want you to take a moment, and in your brain, and in your heart, I want you to open yourself up to the possibility that maybe there's more to this than you think there is. I want you to just open your heart up to the, to the understanding that maybe God loves us so much that, yes, he has a plan for sex after you're married, but what if he loves us so much that he wants us to understand this even as teenagers? And what if after all the noise, after all of parents and, and social media and everything else, what if after all that is silenced, what if we can look to this for guidance? Not because I said so. Right? Do not take this as Pastor John is going to teach us what's right versus what, what's wrong. Because I just got done saying there's a lot of voices out there. Don't take this from me because I say so. Let's open up God's word and see what he says about it. And before we dig into the Bible, I want to ask you something. How many of you have ever jumped into the middle of something and you were really, really confused? Like, how many of you have ever started watching a show in like the middle of season two and you were like, who is that guy? Why, right? Has any, have any of you ever started a show in the middle of like season two or something? Very confusing, right? Have you ever gotten uh, added to like a group thread after like 70 text messages and everybody's said like, wait, no, what just happened? I don't even know all the numbers in this group chat. Like, have you ever gotten thrown into a conversation in the middle and you're like, what is going on? Anybody? Yeah, it's really confusing, right? So whether you're starting a show in the middle of season two, or you've gotten thrown into a group chat in the middle, how do you learn what's going on? You've got to what? Context clues. Context clues, but I heard you have to go back to the what? Beginning. Beginning. We need to go back to the get beginning. And that's what we're going to do with knowing what God wants us uh, wants to understand about sex. We're going to go back to the beginning. The very beginning. So we're going to look at the book of Genesis today, the very first book of the Bible. By the way, uh, I would encourage you all, in your walk with Jesus Christ, to read a Bible. There are Bibles out there that are good. They're actually uh, very appropriate for teenagers. There's a version that's a lot easier to use. And here's what I want to say to you. If you don't have a good Bible, if there's one, like maybe there's one on the shelf in your home and you opened it and you're like, why does every word end in TH? Like, maybe there's a Bible that you have, but you're not really understand, uh, uh, sure how to understand it. If you need a good Bible, if you need a Bible that is specifically made for teens and you don't have one, please let me know. Because guess what? Because of the generosity of this church, we were able to buy a whole bunch of them. And I would love to just give you one for free. So if you need one, please come talk to me after, after uh, the service. Because God gave us his word. Because he wants us to know what his plan is. God gave us the Bible because he loves us so much. He said, listen, I've got a playbook for you. You don't have to guess anymore what I want or don't want, what's good or what's not good. I've given it to you in my word. And the book of Genesis is all about the creation of the world. And what we're going to learn is God was intentional about making this world beautiful. Now, when I say beautiful, you probably think of appearance, and that's true. God did make the world beautiful to look at, but he also made this world beautiful in how it functions. So God made everything in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. And on the sixth day is when he made humans, and let's look at what he says here. The author of Genesis writes this. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. Pause. Who's us? God is literally speaking. Why didn't he say, I'm going to make human beings in my image to be like me? Why did he say, let us make human beings? Anybody? Yeah. Jesus and him. Jesus and him. There's two. Anybody else? Yes. From the beginning, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they were all there from the beginning of time. God's perfect plan is so beautiful. All right, let me get back on track. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. Sorry, I like that word, scurry. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Remember we learned about this a few weeks ago? We were made in the image of God. Male and female, he created them. 
Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. Right there in the beginning, God told man and woman, be fruitful and multiply. These verses tell us a lot. The book of Genesis is so jam-packed with a lot of great stuff, but for the purpose of this message and this series, we're going to focus on two things. Number one, God made people. Number two, God made sex. And the writer goes on to say in Genesis, it was very good. God made things with the intention of saying, God made it and it was good. So the very first message that we ever receive about sex is this. Sex is good and sex is powerful. So right out of the gate, let me tell you, as a pastor in church, here I am telling you, sex is not a bad thing. The way God created it, between a man and a woman, between a husband and a wife, sex is good and sex is powerful. When a man and a woman, when a husband and a wife come together, sex is an expression of love, it's an expression of trust, it's vulnerability, it's powerful. And here's what I want you to know, it's not shameful. I don't want you growing up thinking that, especially as a teenager, if you're thinking or if you have questions about it, then just, just the fact that, that it's in your brain, do not think, oh my gosh, something's wrong. Uh, I can't think about it. I can't talk about it. I can't ask questions about it. No. This is something God created, and it's good. It can bring a husband and wife together in the most intimate way possible. It can create a bond that is meant to be special between a husband and wife. But the reality is, it can also break relationships. It can also cause people a lot of pain. It can cause families a lot of shame. It can be very destructive. So throughout this series, what we're gonna see is how we look at sex and how we look at people are very, very important in this equation. So we've learned what God said thousands of years ago. What does that mean for us today? It's easy for us to say, okay, God said it, be fruitful and multiply. Someday when I'm married, I'll do it. Yay! What does it mean for us today? It means something very different for you than for me. But there is something that we have in common. There is something that as followers of Jesus Christ, if we are a Christian, if being a Christian, if following Jesus isn't just something that we say, if it's a way we live our lives, if being a Christian isn't just something that we say, yeah, I go to church and I'm a Christian. No, if that's what defines who we are, if following Jesus is where we stake our claim, then we are called to live with sexual integrity. How many of you have ever heard the word integrity before? Okay, a bunch of you. You may not have heard it in the terms of sexual integrity before, but integrity is a term it's where we get uh, the word integrated from. Integrity, here's the, the most simple definition that I can find. Integrity is living in a way where your beliefs line up with your actions. Having integrity means if you say, this is who I am, this is what I believe, then you live in light of those beliefs. And as you get older, you're going to meet a lot of people, and I'm not judging any of the people that you spend time with, but as you get older, there are people that struggle with integrity. They will say one thing, and they'll do another. I know a lot of people that will say, honesty is the best policy. But they're not honest in everything that they do. There are people that will say, I believe this. I believe that we should live this way and do this. But that they don't do it themselves. And so when it comes to what God's word says, especially as regarding sex, it's important that what we say, if we say, yes, I want to live my life following Jesus, if we're going to say that, then the way we look at sex, the way we talk about sex, and the way we talk about people and look at people should line up with God, what God's word says. That's going to be really, really important throughout this series as we look at scripture. We're going to have to ask ourselves the question, okay, am I living a life of integrity? If I'm going to live my life according to God's word, if I'm going to say, yes, I believe that this is the word of God. If we're going to say, I believe this is the God-breathed truth, 
Am I going to live my life in a way that lines up with this? So here's the definition we're going to learn, or we're going to use for sexual integrity. Sexual integrity is guarding your potential for intimacy through appropriate boundaries and mutual respect. So let's talk for a few minutes about that. And some of you right now might be thinking like, okay, well, Pastor John, I'm not married. I'm not dating anyone. So does this really apply to me? Yeah, it does. Whether or not you're in a relationship right now, what we're going to learn is the way we think about sex, the way we talk about sex, the way we think about people, and the way we talk about people. Does this align with what God's word says? Because when your beliefs match your actions, it's so much easier to live a life uh, of integrity. When your beliefs match, uh, when what you say and what you believe matches the way you live, it is so much easier to find joy and the peace that passes understanding that comes from God. It is challenging. Take it from someone who lived a large chunk of his life that I was not integrated. I was not living a life of integrity because I said I was a Christian. I said I wanted to follow Jesus. I knew what God's word said, but I was not living in that way. And it was hard because I could feel in my heart something's not right here. Something's not right. If I'm going to say this is, the, this is the playbook of my life, why am I not living this way? And I was living with this constant tension. And the goal should be for us... Did you try again? Sorry about that. My watch wanted to know what sexual integrity was. Um, so as Christians, when we live this way, how are we going to find... How are we going to live lives of sexual integrity? Appropriate boundaries and mutual respect. So what does appropriate boundaries look like? Well, if you're in a relationship with another person, if you're dating someone, it means having a conversation with yourself and with God and with the other person. It means setting uh, boundaries, having guardrails in your relationship about what's okay and what's not okay. I never did this growing up. I knew that, okay, uh, here's the guardrail. Don't have sex until you're married. But I knew nothing about everything else. No one told me, uh, hey, if, if you really want to follow Jesus, here's how you can guard your heart, and here's how you can respect the other person. And so I got myself in a lot of trouble. If you're not dating someone, are you preparing to be in a relationship someday? Is the way you're thinking about sex, the way you're approaching sex, is the way that you're talking to your friends about it? That's one of the things we're going to talk about in small group today. When we hear about it, when we're in conversations about that, or the way that we're speaking and the way we're living lining up with what God's word says. If I could write a letter to my 13-year-old self, I would say, hey man, the next eight years are going to be rough. And it was that way for me when it came to dating and relationships because I didn't have appropriate boundaries and I did not have mutual respect for another person. Because what I've learned is um, don't have sex till you're married. That is something good and it is biblical. But there's so much more to it than that. And like I said, I didn't have someone in my life. I had my parents, but I was not about to talk to them about this. So I didn't have someone in my life who I respected their walk with Jesus Christ where I could say, hey, um, what's okay in this relationship? Like I'm dating this girl and, I've, and, we've, and we've talked and she knows I don't want to have sex until I'm married, but what about everything else? I didn't have that kind of conversation. The only person I could talk to about it, the only people I could talk to about it were my friends and they were like, yep, everything else is fair game. I didn't feel right either, but I didn't know any better. And let me take this opportunity to say, if you want to have that kind of conversation with someone, that's what we're here for. Please find someone who you know and you know their walk with Jesus, that you can have a conversation about this. Talk about what appropriate boundaries look like if you're in a dating relationship. And even if you're not in a dating relationship, say, hey, um, I'm not dating anybody. I'd like to someday. What are some things I could be doing to guard my heart and follow Jesus today in this stage of my life? And if you are dating someone, you ready for this? Talk to them about it. Pastor John, that might be weird and uncomfortable. Do it anyway. 
I'm telling you, have a plan. Maybe you're thinking, ah, I don't want this person to think I'm weird. Okay, how healthy is that relationship then? Like, if you are dating someone, do they know that you're a follower of Jesus Christ? I hope so. If they don't, it's okay to share with them. Hey, listen, um, I care about you, but Jesus is number one in my life. And I want to make sure that this relationship is not only respectful of you, but it's respectful to my Heavenly Father as well. Take it from someone who made a lot of mistakes growing up. Have a plan ahead of time. Have a conversation with God. Have a conversation with someone you trust. Have a conversation with the person you're dating. And take it from someone who cares about each and every one of you and cares about your walk with Jesus Christ. If the person that you're in a relationship with, if you think having this conversation, if they're going to say, yeah, I'm not sure I want to date you anymore, that is okay. It is okay. I would rather have an uncomfortable conversation and walk with Jesus than avoid that hard conversation and walk blindly through relationships in my life. And the reality is God loves you so much and he wants you to have good things. God is not the God of no fun. I've talked to a lot of teens that were like, yeah, Pastor John, I just feel like if I follow Jesus... It's really going to be dull and boring and I'm going to miss out on a lot of fun. No, that is a lie from the devil. There is a way to follow Jesus as a middle school and a high schooler that you can still experience joy and peace. And it's not the joy and the peace that comes from this world because that will go away. All right. Appropriate boundaries and mutual respect. What does the word mutual mean? What was that? Say it again. It goes both ways ways. Mutual means there's more than one person involved here. And if you're in a dating relationship, it's you and that other person. <laughs> and even if you don't know who that person is, how many of you would like to be married someday? Lots of hands in the air. Guess what? God already knows who that person is. God already knows who your spouse is. And there are things you can do today to become the man or the woman that God is preparing you to be in the future. It means repeatedly asking yourself questions, whether you're in a relationship or whether you're just talking with friends or whatever, however you're approaching sex or people in your life. Is this good? Is this healthy? Is this honoring God? Is it honoring me? The best thing you can do in your relationships today, whether it's a dating relationship or a friendship, is put the other person first. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to put God first and love our neighbor as ourself. We get to learn what it looks like to walk humbly and put other people before ourselves. And nowhere is that more evident than in a relationship. It means having conversations with people. None of you are mind readers. That's okay. Talk to someone. What, is, what do you think about this? What do I think about this? Where are our boundaries going to be? Is this okay? Is this not okay? Don't guess. Talk about it. Pastor John, that might be uncomfortable. Do it anyway. I'm begging you. God made us in his image. And we are called to carry the light and life of Jesus Christ. And what we're going to learn and reiterate throughout this whole series, sex is good. And sex is powerful, and we need to be intentional. This isn't just going to magically happen. There's not going to be a day where you're just going to wake up and say, I'm a Christian, and God has magically downloaded all of these things into me, and now I don't have to think about it anymore. We get to take intentional steps to walk to follow Jesus Christ. So before I let you go to your small groups, I have a question. What if this is simpler than we think it is? Not easy, but simple. There's a lot of people that want to complicate sex. There's a lot of voices in this world that want to make you think, well, technically it says this, but there's this little loophole. Da, 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 da. What if it was simpler? What if we could just look at God's word and trust that our heavenly father has a plan and a purpose, not just for us today, but for our future? Because how we look at this matters. And it might be uncomfortable and it might even be a little scary. But I want you to know that I care about you. Your small group leaders care about you. And there is a way to live a life of integrity 
where we can follow Jesus and experience his peace that passes understanding. Amen? All right, so I'm going to pray for you guys, and we're going to head off in a small group. Dear God, Lord, I just thank you so much for the people in this room. And God, I pray that as we seek to honor you and follow Jesus, that you would give us wisdom, that you would give us discernment. Lord, I pray for the, for the teens in this room, God, that they would seek to honor you above anything else. Lord, that you would give them the courage to have the conversations that they need to have, that you would give them the courage to set the boundaries in place in their lives that they have to so that we can live lives that are honoring to you in all that we do. God, I pray that you would bless our time in small groups, and I pray that if there's anybody that wants a deeper walk with you that needs to have a conversation with someone, God, I pray that you would give them the strength to do that. In Jesus' name, amen.